Okay, so now so now let's proceed to the applications of your definite integrals. So we'll be starting with the area of a plane region. And then as we progress throughout the second half of the semester, we'll be discussing um, volume, arc length, surface area, then other applications such as work and liquid pressure. So mainly we'll be using your definite integral throughout the rest of the semester. Okay, so for this case, we'll just be using area first and I think we need to master this topic because for the rest of the top for the rest of the topic, since we'll be utilizing the concept of the area. So so I guess you need to master this one. <clears throat> okay, so for the area of the plane region, so in your geometry class before, so we all know that you have um, known um, formulas for the area of the square, so such as it is S squared, then if you have a rectangle, it's base times height. If you have a um, let's say triangle so you have one half base times height so, so if all know so these three formulas were derived using your integrals your definite integrals so if you want to solve the area of an irregular shape figure so the best option for this one is to use your integration or your definite integrals. So we have three categories. So since we'll be <clears throat> so since we'll be um, solving your areas in the x and y plane, so we have three different categories for your area. So we have the area or the region above or below the x-axis so for example this is your x and y plane so let's say you have an area of this one so let's say you have a parabola then let's say you have a line here and then this is the area bounded by the two equation <coughs> Okay, so notice that in the first one, so the region is above or below the x-axis. So notice that we have an area below the x-axis and an area above the x-axis. And then for the y-axis, so it's across the y-axis, so it may be on the left side or on the right side, or it may be in between the y-axis. And it may be a region between two curves or two equations. So not, so not necessarily curves, but under two equations. So why are we talking about equations? So I hope that you have um, the subject of analytic geometry in your senior high because uh, most likely we will be graphing equations. So equation of a line, and then equation of your curves. So for curves, we have multiple categories for curves such as parabola, and then ellipse and then your hyperbola <clears throat> so I hope by this time you know how to um, graph your line so I think this one is super easy but for the curves so if you don't have this one in your senior high so you might have a bit of a problem here because um, Graphing these equations requires you to transform the equation into its standard form. So, process before you can graph these curves. <clears throat> so, if you don't have um, don't have any knowledge on how you can graph these curves, so you need to catch up by researching online okay
So as we explain the different examples later on, so you will realize that most of the process will be on the graphing aspect rather than the integration aspect. So I think it's 50, 50, 50% 50 in the graphing aspect, then determining the, the intersection points. So it's more like um, of so it's more on the analytic geometry side first and then lastly is once you have the the diagram or the graph it's a time that you're going to use the formula <clears throat> so in solving your area of a plane region so we only have two formulas so we have the vertical strip and the horizontal strip so why are we talking about vertical and horizontal strip? So to make the long story short, so before the, the integral happened, so let's try to draw a triangle. <clears throat> so before the, the deduction of your definite integral, so way back before, so Mathematicians just used approximations in in getting the area. So they are using rectangular strips. So it may be vertical or horizontal um, rectangular strips. So of course, the the more um, rectangles you have, so meaning you will have less um, extra space here or less. Um, ignored space in your summation okay so you have multiple rectangular strips up until you reach this point so again the thinner the strip the better so that you can have a better approximation of the area so that's why in your midterm exam you have your um, item in which you are required to solve the sigma notation because before the definite integral so so your areas your volumes and other applications um, were just approximated using sigma notation so that's why um, it's a introduction it's a introductory topic towards your definite integrals so since it's not really re so it's not really relevant for us to to study sigma notation because we are we are interested in the definite integral so motoni skip ta in solving your um, sigma notation so we jump straight ahead to your definite integrals so so, so that's the idea behind the vertical strip and the horizontal strip so to make our summations more accurate and to make our summations more um, easy okay so we have vertical strip so in the vertical strip of your definite integral so we will just be utilizing your one vertical strip so we try to ignore the other vertical strip so notice that your vertical strip is in a form of a rectangle so let's try to erase the the other rectangles <clears throat> okay so notice that your your vertical strip is in the form of a rectangle so meaning the area for this one is base times height <clears throat> excuse okay so for the base this is the base this is the width of your um, rectangular strip so since we don't know the exact width of your your rectangular strip so we let this as your differential x okay so meaning our base is your differential x now for the height so for the height is we're going to use a subtraction technique so for example you're going to get uh, the length between 10 and 6 so that's 4 right? 
So in this case, we're going to subtract the top function with the bottom function. So meaning whatever equation is touching uh, touching the vertical strip at the top, that's your y sub t. And whatever equation the bottom part is touching, that's your y bottom. <clears throat> okay, so that's in a function of x. So, so another um, expression of this is in other books, that's f of x. So meaning the equation is in terms of x. Then the other term is g of x. Okay, so notice that we now have a height. So the height is so the height is y sub d minus y sub b. So meaning that's the equation touching the top portion minus the equation touching the bottom part of the strip. So meaning our height is this one. We have y top minus y bottom. So as you notice in the given formula, this one is your height, and then this one is your base. So basically, we are just adding up or summing up infinite numbers of um, your vertical strip. Okay, so your x1 to x2, so instead of adding up multiple um vertical steps so to make our lives easier so we just add up the x aspect so let's say this one is x1 going to your x2 so it's easier compared to adding up multiple rectangles in your sigma notation okay so that's for the vertical step now for the horizontal strip, so it's the same as your vertical strip. The concept is still the same, but the orientation of your rectangle is now in the horizontal aspect. Okay, so let's say this is your vertical, I mean your horizontal strip. So it's still the same. So the right portion of your strip, so whatever your right portion is touching that will be your x sub r then the left portion is your x sub l and it's still the same so the base so instead of um, being dx so the base is now <clears throat> so the base is now xl minus i mean xr minus xl that is your base and then your height is this one is on the unknown height which is your differential y so that's dy so meaning this horizontal strip is height i mean base times height sorry <clears throat> so this one is base and then height so again, we're just adding up multiple numbers of your horizontal strip. So this is where your limit is introduced. So since we are now in the y aspect, so this will be from y1 to y2. Okay, so that's the concept behind the formula for your area. So it's super simple because, again, it's just adding up multiple numbers of rectangular strips, whether it's in the vertical orientation or in the horizontal orientation. So if you're going to ask me which strip I'm going to use, so it, so it will depend on the situation. So later on, we'll discover why the other... Um, technique is better than the, the than the other one so maybe the vertical strip is better compared with the horizontal strip or the horizontal strip may be better compared with 
the vertical strip. So we'll discover that once we go to your examples. Alright, so there are five steps involved in integration of plane areas. So we can just um, group together, I think we can group together numbers um, 4 and 5. So the first step is you always need to sketch the region. So again, this is the difficult part in most cases because sometimes you'll be given complicated um, equations and you need to graph those equations. And also, aside from graphing those equations, you're also required to um, get the points of intersection because those points of intersection so the points of intersection will be used to um, will be used to determine your limits of integration. So gamit niya once we have these points because this will become the limits of integration. Kadong x1 to x2 or y1 to y2. <clears throat> okay, so numbers two and three can be combined. So slice it into thin pieces. So in our case, we can just slice it into one um, one strip, one representative strip. So it may be vertical or horizontal strip. Then you need to label your your vertical or horizontal strip. So you need to label. So if you're going to use a vertical strip, you need to label. Um, Y top, Y bottom, and then your DX. You're using horizontal strip. You're going to label X sub R, X sub L, and then your DY. And then, of course, since we have discussed this one in the previous slide, so of course we pretend it as a rectangle because we can come up with a that's why we came up with a formula because we represent your strip as a rectangle. So numbers 4 and 5, so we need to add up the approximation. So again, since we're not using sigma notation anymore, so we're going to use your definite integral. Okay, so so actually, before your formula became into this one, in y top minus y bottom dx, so the previous version of this one is, I think it's sigma notation something, and then on the left side, that's limit of x approaches infinity. There's a conversion for this one. Muna ni mo siyang um, definite integral. So, wala kayo ko nag-put into details in the sigma notation because again, it's not really relevant in... Um, it's relevant if you want to know the concept behind the area concept. But in terms of the exam, so most likely your sigma notation won't be coming out again in the final exam. So that's why Maragwa na kayo nag-discuss again for, for sigma notation. Okay, so for you to appreciate the concept, so let's try to um, discuss the example. So most likely you'll be given this um, problem. You need to find the, the area of the region bounded by the line y equals 3x. And then the curve y equals x squared. So as you notice, it's it's a clearly blank space, and you have to work with the graph first before using the the formula. Okay, so as you know, this one is a line, but obviously because the degree of your variables is linear, that's why it's a line. Linear meaning to the power of one. 
Now on the second equation, we have a curve, but ba ni siyang curve. So again, if you notice the equation, one is in the first degree, the other one is second degree. So this one is a parabola. Okay, so if you don't know the standard formula of a parabola, so this is x minus h squared is equal to plus minus 4a y minus k. So this is opening upwards or downwards. Then opening right and left is you just reverse the variables is equal to plus minus 4a x minus h so the opening of your parabola will depend on the coefficient of your um i think this one is latus rectum or your focus so if it's negative it's opening left it's positive it's opening to the right so muna siya mga shortcut Okay, so let's try to graph your equation. So, pasensya lang daan sa graph ako eh. Parang effort ni siya. <clears throat> okay, so let's try to graph the equations first. So we have the line y equals 3x. And then the curve y equals x squared. So for you to do this in an easy fashion, so you can equate the two equations first so that you can determine the points of intersection. So notice that in the curve, the vertex is at 0, 0. So meaning the point, panamurag, yang point sa yang the vertex of your parabola is at 0, 0. So we can say that the curve is at 0, 0. The center of your curve is at 0, 0. So before to, um, maglibog siya no, but matala siyang ikuan, step by step. So let's try to equate the two equations first. Okay, so we have y equals 3x, and then the other one is y equals x squared. <clears throat> okay, so equating the two equations, or let's say we incorporate um, one equation with the other by replacing the y. So let's say plugging in the second equation to the first equation. So we now have x squared is equal to 3x. So we isolate, um, we group together the x's. So we now have x squared minus 3x equals 0. And then x squared, so we can factor out x. So this becomes x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I hope you, you can remember this concept in your mathematics in your high school or in your senior high. So getting the roots of your algebraic expressions. So I think that's, a, the, that's the particular topic. So the first root is 0. And then the second root is 3. <clears throat> so since we now have your two values of x, so we can now plug it in in the first equation or in the second equation. So whichever equation you like, so it will still give us the same answer. So at x equals 0, so let's say we're using equation 1. So y is equal to 3 times 0. So y is equal to 0. So the first point of intersection is at 0, 0. 
okay and then the second point of intersection if x is equal to 3 so that's 3 times 3 so y is equal to 9 so the second point of intersection is at 3 and 9 Okay, so the first point of intersection is at 0, 0. And then the second point is at 3 and 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's say this is the ninth one. Then 1, 2, 3. Let's say this is the point here. <clears throat> Okay, so drawing the line first. <clears throat> so if you examine the line, so in a shortcut manner, so notice that the slope is positive. So for you who don't know the, um, the standard formula, so the slope intercept form, so y is equal to mx plus p. So if the slope is negative, it's inclining to the left it's if the slope is positive it's inclining to the right so we have positive 3 so it's obvious that our line is in this direction so muna na siyang struggle sa on online class Okay, so this is our line here. That will be so you so don't forget to label the parts. So this one is y is equal to 3x. Okay, so next is your parabola. So again, as we, as we noticed, the linear part is your y aspect. So meaning it it will be opening upward. Or downward so since we have positive 4a so notice that so if kanisha if 0 atong h so meaning this becomes x minus 0 squared is equal to plus minus 4 times a then y minus 0 so maybe our a is 1 fourth that's why this becomes x squared then positive 4 times 1 fourth so, so probably the the focus is a I mean 1 fourth so it times y so we have x squared is equal to y okay so notice that it is up uh, opening upward so ananasha so meaning this one is in this direction here Oops, here we go. Extra goal, Janisha. Of course, the counterpart of this one is on the left side, then, diba? Okay, so the so this green graph here is your y equals x squared. Okay, so the region bounded by the two graphs is this one between the blue and the green one. So this particular graph, uh, I mean this particular region here. So now since we are done with your graph and we are done with labeling your um, x and y plane also, so next step is we're going to use vertical strip or horizontal strip. So in this example, I'm going to show you both methods so that we can compare why the other one is better compared with Moisa. <coughs> so <coughs> excuse. Okay, so let's try to begin first with the vertical strip. So let's try to use another color. 
So vertical strip. Okay, that's the vertical strip. <clears throat> so technique in your vertical strip is that whichever portion you're going to place your vertical strip, it should be that the top portion so let's say in this case the top portion is touching the blue graph this is the white top and then the bottom part of your strip is touching the green graph so what I'm going to talk about is that if I place my vertical strip way above here in this region it, it should be that the top portion is still white top and then the bottom part is still Y bottom. So meaning, whichever portion I'm going to place my vertical strip, the top portion is always touching the green graph. And then the bottom part of your vertical strip is always touching the, the green graph. So if I place it at the bottom part, so notice that the top portion is still touching the blue graph. And then the bottom part is still touching the green graph. So why, so why we need to be consistent? So of course, if you observe the formula, so let's try to write the formula. So Vs, vertical strip. So area is equal to, so from x1 to x2, that will be y top minus y bottom dx. So again, if you notice that we need to be consistent, because we're going to subtract the top portion with the bottom portion. Now, if there's a case wherein you are touching the same graph in your strip, so let's say in the vertical strip you are touching the blue graph, and then at the bottom part you're also touching the blue graph, so notice that you're going to subtract the same equation and it will give you a zero answer. So for example, we have this parabola here. Then let's say bounded by the line. So let's say you're going to solve this particular region. Right? So if you're going to use a vertical strip, right? so notice that the top equation is the same as the bottom equation. So meaning if you're going to plug it in in the formula, so ma mutlog siya, right? ma zero out siya. So muna, the other option is for you to utilize the horizontal strip because the right portion is the equation of the line and the left portion is the equation of the parabola so so it is consistent all throughout so baso muna siya ang inyong timanan so it should be that the top portion is always consistent so it's touching the same graph and then the bottom portion is touching the same graph also. So it's not the same as the top one because if the same na sila, di ba? Ma zero out siya, ma butlog siya. Ma zero out siya. And we, we're going to avoid that scenario. Okay, so notice that the points of intersection is at zero, zero. So since again, we are using vertical strip. So we're going to use the x-axis limits. So that will be from 0 to 3. So here. So in the graph, this is 0, 0. And then the top portion is 0, I mean 3. So 3 and 9. So that's from 0 to 3. Okay, so y top. Again, that's the equation touching the top portion. So that's the blue graph. So meaning y top, this portion here, y top is equivalent to 3x. Okay. And then y bottom is equivalent to the green graph that is y bottom is equal to x squared so notice that we're not using y in the equation but 
we are using variables of x as we plug in your y top and y bottom equations <clears throat> Okay, so again, integral of zero um, from zero to three, and that will be three x. So three x, and then minus x squared dx. Okay, so by this time, since we are now allowed to use our calculator. So you can, so in Casio 991ES plus or Casio 991ES, so there's an integral symbol below the alpha button. So I think it's in this. So for other calculators such as Sharp, so I think you still, you also have the same um, button as well, but I don't know where it is lang sa Sharp nga brand. Okay, so if you press that one, what will appear in the screen is three empty boxes and then dx. So the, so the default variable for the calculator is x variable. Okay, so you now plug in the equation. So I suggest that, you're, you, that you do this in, in this manner, in the style. So parenthesis first and then parenthesis for the y top equation alpha x then minus then parenthesis for the second alpha x squared then parenthesis again and then dx then you have the answer the area is equal to so that will be 9 halves square units So that is for your um, vertical strip. All right, so I hope you have the same answer as well. So next is we're going to um, use the horizontal strip and compare it whether or not it's better to use the horizontal strip or it's better to use the horizontal strip compared to the vertical strip. So again, the orientation is now different. So let me write it here lang. Hindi lang siya musapaw sa vertical strip. So again, notice that the right portion is the green graph and then the left portion is the blue graph. So again, it should be consistent. So let's say I'm going to place it here. So the right portion is still the green graph. The left portion is still the blue graph. So again, we're trying to avoid the, the zero scenario. I'm cancel out ang two equations. Okay, so horizontal strip. So the area is equal to so y to y1 to y2 and then x right minus x left dy. <clears throat> okay, so your x right is the is the green graph. So x right is the green graph, so that will be um, y is equal to x sub r squared, diba? Right? So we need to let it be as your x r, so we need to take the square. So we have square root of y is equal to x r. Then for the blue graph, so since this one is x left, so this becomes y is equal to 3x sub l or x left. So meaning our x left is y over 3 is equal to x 
Tak. <clears throat> okay, so notice now is since we're doing your I mean, horizontal strip, so our limits of integration should be in the y aspect. Y aspect, so we now have from zero to nine. Okay, so x right again is square root of y minus x left is y over 3 and then dy. So again, if you're going to use your calculator, so since the default function is in terms of x, so if you're going to plug it in your calculator, so that's from 0 to 9, then square root of alpha x then minus alpha x over 3, then parenthesis again, then dx. Okay, so if we try to plug in this one in the calculator, So notice that if you plug this one in the calculator, so morag medyo taas yah, de ba? Morag duki duki siya magawa sa answer. So it's taking a lot of time giving us the answer compared with the vertical strip. So no karon wala pa siya ni gawas. Okay, so while waiting for the answer, so 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 ano ang vertical ano ang vertical step is giving us the answer directly compared with the horizontal step. So notice that the integrand created so this portion here. So this is the integrand being created by the vertical step. So if you compare it with the integrand being created by the horizontal step. So notice that it's a complicated term compared with the vertical strip. Diba? So this one is 3x minus x squared. This one is we have square root of y then minus y over 3. So of course, kita gani nag, we're having a difficult time integrating radical expressions. So how much more the calculator? Diba? So makasolve ang calculator because it is powerful but it's also taking a bit of a time said in giving us the answer so in the calculator it's giving us 4.5 square units so that's the same as nine halves so square units because area man ta, ba? so notice the difference so you have the same answer but again the horizontal strip is giving you um, waiting time to get the get the results of the integration so muna you can see that the other strip is better than the other one so of course you also need to help your you also need to help your calculator eh, para po dali siya makatag sa answer di ba so you give your calculator um easy integrands di ba kay para Tiki siya maglisod ng katag sa answer. Alright. So that's for problem number one. So, do you have questions? So, taas kayo itong ibuhat, no? Oh, it's, it's just square units because we are um... I'm solving it in a plane area, the x and y plane, so just square units. So I think in most of the problems that, that you're going to solve, it's um, just square units. So unless you have a word problem wherein you're going to find the area of 
this particular so let's say you're going to find the area of the boomerang then you are given the, the equation at the edge of this bo uh, boomerang and uh, So I think that's the time wherein you're going to use um, specific units of measurement. Okay, so notice that there are two portions, so graphing. And then this one is integrating. So the graphing portion is taking up a lot of time again compared with the integrating aspect of the solution. So of course when you answer the problem, so you only choose one method. So either vertical strip or horizontal strip. So so another tip for you to for you to be able to determine whatever strip you're going to use. So let's say you have so y is equal to 3x and then y is equal to x squared so notice that this one is easy compared to transforming it in terms of um, x equals something diba? so x equals y over 3 then x is equal to square root of y so by this time you can say that you want to work with this equation because kanisha na square root iba. So you don't want to deal with any complicated terms in your equation. So you go to the vertical strip. So that's one technique in in which particular um, strip you're going to use. Alright, so any Further questions? <clears throat> okay, so if there's none, so we can now proceed with so I'm so this is the solution. So nine over two. <clears throat> so you can also try to verify your graph i think you're familiar with desmos so in your problem set later on so just um, use desmos first in getting the graph so that maragin nyo lang sa ang concept of using the formula so but in the exam so wala na si Desmos sa exam because it will be it will be manually um, graphing your solutions so dapat with with solution na siya ano, mo yung nani ba getting the so di lang kay na magic ang graph so you also need to present evidences on how you have created your graph and this is for the horizontal strip okay so let's now try to um, solve the second problem again the technique here is you compare it compare the y concept the y the y's with the x's so notice that this one is okay okay to deal with because y is equal to something but if you're going to convert this one into its corresponding x parameter so x equals the fourth root of y then the other one so medyo dugay dugay pa niya kay you have to complete the square so let's say we have negative y and then this one is x squared minus 2x so completing the square is negative y plus 1 
x squared minus 2x plus 1. Ba? So, if, so, 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 sa kanil pa lang daan na uh, process, so, it's already a hassle compared with just utilizing the vertical strip. Ah, so, let's try to continue this one. So, x minus 1 squared. Then, getting the square root is you have square root of 1 minus y equals x minus 1. So, your x variable here is x equals the square root of 1 minus y plus 1. Ah, so, you have these two terms, all complicated terms. Ah, so, we don't have, so, we don't want to be dealing with that particular so we use the vertical strip because this one will be your y top or your y bottom whichever um, whichever your um, graph is um, being presented later okay so let's try to graph your equations first Okay, so in the first graph, that's y equals x to the power of 4. So it's the same concept as your parabola. So the center of which is at 0, 0. And then the linear part is y, so it's, it's opening upward, right? So, and then the second one is a parabola. But again, we still need to complete the square. For us to determine kung asa ang yahang center or the vertex of your parabola. So in doing so, so let's try to determine first the point of intersection. So y equals x to the power of 4. And then y equals 2x minus x squared. So, plugging in your first equation with the second equation. So, you now have x to the power of 4 equals 2x minus x squared. And then, grouping them together on the left side, so you have x to the power of 4, then plus x squared, then minus 2x equals 0. So, finding the roots is we have x so we can isolate 1x or factor out 1x. x times x cubed plus x minus 2 equals 0. So the first root is equal to 0. So the next is we have three roots, three possible roots because it's the third degree. So it's a, it's, so it's a third degree polynomial. So we have x2 x3 and then x to the power, I mean x sub 4. So, so in a fast manner, how are you going to determine the root of a third degree polynomial? So again, since we are now allowed to use our calculator, so for those of you who haven't fully discovered the potential of their calculator, so you go to mode, then press 5, and then press 4. So this is for Casio 9 and 1 ES plus. So mode 5, so if so if you're going to press mode, so you're so you're given I think it it's eight options. And then you choose five because that's the equation uh, category. So in other calculator, another brands of calculators as a sharp. So just try to search the the equation category so once you have reached the equation category so you press 5 then you're then you're given another set of categories or options so that's from 1 to 4 so so 1 is 2 unknowns number 2 is 3 unknowns number 3 is quadratic and then the fourth option is your third degree polynomial so it's in this format ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to zero. 
So if you're going to press 4, so I think you're you are presented with a table. On a, a, then there's a Z, there's a blank here, and then B, there's a blank here, and then C, there's a blank there, then D. So what these letters are 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 representing, so these are the coefficients and the constants of the third degree polynomial. So A being the coefficient of the x cube, then B the coefficient of your x squared parameter, then x is the I mean C is the coefficient of the x variable, and then D is your constant. So take note that you need to follow the format that the calculator is presenting. So once we go back again in our equation, so coefficient of x cube is one. So one and then equal sign, then you are then the highlighted option will now go to the B part. And then since there's no x squared term in our equation, so that's zero. So zero equal sign. Then again you are then you are presented again with the C option. So that's x. So in our equation, the coefficient of x is 1. So 1 and then equal sign. And then lastly is your constant. So negative 2, but in the format of the calculator, that's positive d. So you need to plug in negative 2. So negative 2 then equals sign. Then after plugging, plugging all the terms, equal sign again so it will give you so it will give you x1 is 1 then i think x the following x's are imaginary numbers so imaginary nisha so since we cannot utilize the imaginary numbers imaginary so we so we only utilize your 0 and 1 option Okay, so at x equals 0, so that will be y times, <clears throat> I mean 0 to the power of 4, so that's 0, 0. So the first point of intersection is at 0, 0. So at x equals 1, so y equals 1 raised to the power of 4. So y is equal to 1, then the second point of intersection is at 1, 1. <clears throat> so meaning the points of intersection is at 0, 0. And then the other one, so let's try to make it big long because... So let's say this is... Okay, so we know that the first graph, the y equals x to the power of 4, is opening upward. Opening Dombabao. Ang second one is a parabola. So let's try to utilize this portion here. So this is x minus 1 squared, then equals negative. So let's say that will be y minus 1. So again, according to the standard formula, the vertex is at 1, 1. And then this portion here is negative, so it's opening downwards. So it's a shortcut. So just try to discover some shortcut methods on how to graph your parabola in an easy manner. Okay, so let's start with y equals x to the power of 4. So this is your y equals x to the power of 4. And then the green graph, so again since this one is going downwards,
So Anna Sha Parabola Sha Divana Parabola. So this one is y equals 2x minus x squared. Okay, so the region bounded by your equations is this one. So we need to solve this region here. I think according x to the power of 4 is, I think it's a snake, murag snake, man siguro na siya nga graph. Murag ang lower portion niya is maana po na siya, murag, murag symmetrical siya ba? No, oh, murag mirror image. So, I don't know. So, murag i-verify lang sa Desmos. Sa kanin green is sure ko nga parabola na siya. Okay, second degree man. Okay, so again, since we are now using, so we are only using a vertical strip because again, it's impossible. Uh, it's possible for you to use the horizontal strip, but mulagi morag. Thanks sa kung yesterday na class mga three minutes mi nagkuwat sa answer sa horizontal strip. So if you want to try using the horizontal strip, so pili you can do it on your own later. Okay, so vertical strip. So notice that whichever portion the vertical strip is placed. The top portion is always touching the green graph and then the bottom function, I mean the bottom part is always touching the blue graph. Okay, so this is your green graph. So again, it's consistent. This is our Y top. The bottom part is your Y bottom. So the, the blue graph. Okay, so vertical strip. So area is equal to the integral of x1 to x2, then y top minus y bottom dx. Okay, so x sub 1 to x sub 2, so that will be from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, the x parameter. So y top is again the green graph so that will be 2x minus x squared and then the top graph I mean the bottom graph is the blue graph that's x to the power of 4 dx. Again you're going to use your calculator so again I suggest that you use it in this manner so parenthesis first then parenthesis for the y top function so 2 alpha x minus alpha x squared then minus parenthesis again alpha x to the power of 4 then parenthesis again dx so in less than a minute you now have answer So again, the white top is this portion here. And then your blue graph is this one. Okay, so the answer is 7 over 15 square units. So make sure that since we're not dealing yet with trigonometric functions, so make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Nang my letter D sa babaw. All right, so. Do you have questions or clarifications?
Okay, so this is the solution. So this is the part where you can get the points of intersection. So it's not complete. So must complete Patahongi shows a previous slide. Then this is the graph. Ah, morag morag parabola dey sa pa yung assumptions sa y is equal to x to the power four. So it's so it's so morag siya parabola dey. I think it's the cube mas yuro ka na morag s. I think the odd the odd degrees are the kato morag letter s ang graph. So quadratic so morag letter u siya if quadratic. I mean if even functions. Alright, so if you don't have any further questions, so I think that's the concept of the area. So I'm going to give you a problem set for this one. So again, for you to master the concept first, so just try to ask help from the Desmos graph first so that you can know how to utilize the equations first, the formulas, and then just study how to graph the equations later.